Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, yeah, and today I, I will show you uh, how I built my um, my home VMware lab. Actually, it's not the first one I built. I've built several several labs. Yeah, during my uh, my career uh, journey. But yeah, I thought it would be nice to uh, to share to share with you what I have in my lab these days. Yeah, just to give you some. Um, some insights so i've um, i've bought a new server um last month and uh, yeah let's see uh what i have in my lab all right so um recently i bought a new server i got um, a, um, a hpe dl uh, 380 gen 9 server and i like the gen 9 servers so much because they are really uh, really fast especially on the boot uh, on the boot process it's really fast um, the DL380 specifically, yeah, because it has multiple uh, PCIe slots in case you wanted to install PCIe adapters. So it has, um, it's equipped with uh, with six PCIe uh, slots. Okay, and I, I will tell you how I used all of these slots in um, in a second. Okay, it's equipped with a couple of uh, CPUs as you can see on the screen. Uh, 192 gigs of DDR uh, DDR4 memory, okay, and um, yeah, because in, uh, it, it would be nice if you have a lot of PCI sl uh, PCIe slots because in in my uh, previous lab, uh, yeah, in my old server, uh, it's lying there in the in the corner of this room. It's um, it's also a, an HP uh, DL360 Gen 8. and that Gen 8 had only um, two slots, only two PCI slots. Okay, sometimes this is a problem uh, if you if you're not interested in uh, installing PCI um, cards or adapters, then it's not a big issue. Dell 360 Gen 9, even or Gen 10, uh, based on your on your um, on your budget, would be uh, more than enough. Yeah, but I had another uh, issue with that server that it's, uh, it was really slow in terms of the boot. Yeah, and um, it supported only uh, vSphere uh, 6.5. I couldn't even find any workarounds. And yeah, it, 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 it accepted 6.5 with a workaround. So I couldn't directly install uh, E6i 6.5 uh, on, uh, on a Gen 10, uh, on a Gen, sorry, a Gen 8 server. So this is why, this is one of the reasons I had to buy a um, this Gen 9 server. All right. Um, in terms of storage, yeah, I have... Um, a couple of uh, SSDs, they were shipped with that server, and a couple of uh, SAS, uh, SAS disks. These disks were already installed on my, yeah, Gen uh, Gen Eight uh, Gen Eight uh, server. I've moved them to uh, to the new server. Yeah, I'm using them for some uh, yeah for some purposes, and I have also. Um, this is why I needed a lot of PCI exp uh, uh, Express slots because. Uh, recently, um, Intel uh, shared with me um, PCIe um, NVMe uh, disks, and I needed to uh, uh, to test uh, these uh, disks um, uh, on, in my lab. So I needed a server with um, with with more um, PCI slots. All right. Uh, yeah, the overall performance of the Gen uh, the Gen 9 is impressive. I'm using it right now with the E6i. Eight. Uh, I am. Um, yeah. As we speak, I'm recording this video in um, in March 2000. Uh, in March 2023. Okay. Um, according to the micro uh, th to uh, VMware's official official documentation, the Gen 9 supports up to E6 i7. However, yeah, I give it a go and upgrade it from seven to eight, and it's working perfectly fine. And for lab, you have no support. Uh, contracts anyway, so um, you would you won't find an issue uh, running the latest. So I'm happy to have E6i8 on my uh, Gen uh, Gen 9 server. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, for networking, uh, I have this Cisco toy. Yeah, it's the uh, 37 um, 3750 uh, uh, switch. It's a layer th uh, three switch, and I needed the layer three switch switch. In my lab for yeah for uh, to, to be able to play a bit with with VLANs yeah I'm fan of uh, Cisco IOS and creating VLAN VLANs and routing because I yeah, I need a lot of VLANs for my uh, VMs on, on on the lab. Can you live without a switch? Uh, layer three switch? Yes, you can only have just the server and that's it. 
uh, you can use something like, I believe, uh, there are several uh, solutions out there for um, virtualizing the VLANs and having VLANs on your, uh, with routing uh, on your ESXi, uh, like GNS3, but yeah, I'm not familiar with this stuff and uh, that specific switch is, is really relatively cheap, uh, especially in, in Europe. Yeah, it, it, it depends. So these are my toys. This is the server and uh, yeah, these are the SSDs, these are the SAS disks, this is the switch, the Cisco switch. I have multiple connections going to the uh, back uh, of the server as well as this access point. So yeah, this is access point that connects um, me to the home um, internet. Yeah. Uh, and this is actually the second server I buy because uh, yeah, I had one of it uh, a while ago and then I had to move from a country to another country so I had to sell out my lab. I had a nice uh, nice lab though back uh, back in the day. I had um, a Dell Dell server. Uh, but I can yeah, I can't remember the model name. It was R 500, but I can't I can't right now remember the uh, the name of the, the model anyway, but Dell is also a great choice uh, Yeah, and it supports you can have a legacy uh, model and it's it, it can still support modern versions of vSphere and um, and the E6i, right? Yeah, uh, so I on this uh, server here. I, I have two um, network adapters uh, with a total of eight uh, ports each port has a speed of one gig for a lab. It's quite enough. Yeah, I'm connecting some of them to my switch. I I will show you uh, uh, a quick video uh, on the lab physically on the lab. I have also um, an access point. And this access point is mainly used to um, yeah to connect the the lab to my in my home internet because I yeah I I have my. Uh, ISP's router on the ground floor here and uh, where my lab is is on the first floor and I can run a direct uh, UTP cable from down there to, to the upper uh, 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 floor so I had to to use um, an access point and I've configured it in a bridged mode so I've created a, a Wi-Fi bridge from this access point down there to my other uh, to my ISP's uh, router to yeah to, and and of course back to back there's a patch cord running from this um, access point to the switch and this will be giving internet con connectivity to the VMs and workloads running in my lab. All right, enough uh, talking. Let's go to uh, my V center and show you. Right, so this is my my lab vCenter. This is vCenter 8. And as you can see, this is my host. Yeah, the host name, but ignore that. The host name is uh, is old, E6i7, when it used to run um, yeah, uh, E6i7. Uh, and then I've upgraded to um, E6i8, as you can see here. This is the memory I have. And um, I have a bunch of VMs here, so yeah, this is my home lab domain controller. Uh, yeah, this is uh, these are some Microsoft uh, VMs that uh, I used to uh, test and record some uh, videos for uh, some Microsoft te technologies running on my home lab. This is um, a camp load balancer here. I use it uh, to yeah to do some load balancing. This is my lab firewall, and why would I need a firewall for the lab? Well, actually, uh, I'm, I'm using it to perform natting, so um, my network switch can't, uh, by default, does not support natting, so if I want a virtual machine here to uh, have internet access, there's no way unless um, natting is, is enabled, so no way to enable it on my Cisco switch, so... Yeah, previously um, in another lab I had um, uh, another um, 1800 series um, Cisco switch, uh, sorry, Cisco router, it was a router, and that router was connected to my home lab uh, switch, and it was doing the um, uh, the netting, but yeah, I figured out that yeah, it's, it's possible to do the netting some uh, other ways, so yeah, I have here a uh, PFSense firewall, it's my PFSense firewall, and this firewall is doing the netting from the internal VLANs of the lab to the internet so yeah these VMs can reach out to the internet for any uh, for any reason 
Uh, I'm just showing you what VMs I have uh, to give you some insights on what you, what you can do. Um, I, I also, I used um, I used the, the lab previously for my uh, Kubernetes uh, to, to, to prepare for my Kubernetes exam preparation, so you can yeah, deploy a bunch of Linux boxes and run um, Kubernetes on top of them. You can run a lot of things, uh, things based on the resources, the hardware resources that you can um, you, you have you can afford yeah to buy. Okay. Um, what else? This is a virtual cluster of vSAN because I, uh, yeah, I, um, I've demonstrated. Uh, this is these are uh, shadow hosts now. Um, uh, yeah, I've I've conducted another video previously about um, uh, vSAN A's with the new um, ESA uh, topology where I um, showcased. Uh, I was yeah showcasing the performance. I was testing the performance of this Intel Optane. Um, NVMEs in the lab, so yeah, that lab was running completely on Intel uh, Optane NVMe. I will put in the description of the video a link to the uh, to the other uh, uh, storage performance test if you're interested in uh, vSAN technologies and uh, the, v v the vSAN technology and yeah, um, NVMe uh, storage. All right, so this is another uh, possibility for you here to test something you can't maybe do it in production yeah? so you can do it on a small scale uh, in your home lab all right so let's click again on the hosts uh what data stores do i have uh let me get a better view no 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 let me get a better view here um okay the data stores so yeah so i have here three main data stores uh, this is the SSD on the couple of SSD devices. Um, yeah, this is the SAS devices on a data store, and this is the NVMe. Uh, this is the NVMe uh, data store here running on yeah some of the PCI NVMe's I um, I have. What else uh, I need to show you? Yeah, for the config, let's see the networking for example. Uh, storage are, yeah okay let's finish the storage first so here are these these are the storage devices I have these are the um, uh, the um, Intel um, NVMe devices that I have in my uh, in my lab let me click on this 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 will give us maybe a better view yeah so these are the Intel devices so you can see here the protocol is here it's PCIe I have a SAS I have uh, yeah uh, flash, uh, f this is the Flash SAS, and there's another SAS here, yeah, SAS HHD, and the SAS uh, SSDs, yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, the networking, yeah, let's check the, uh, not the virtual switch, just the virtual adapters first. The virtual adapters, okay, uh, no, sorry, the, this is the VM kernel adapters. Yeah, physical adapters, sorry. Yeah, so these are the physical adapters I have. Yeah, eight ports. All right. Uh, yeah, the virtual switches. Let me show you how v many VLANs I have. How much VLANs I have here. Or how much, how many, anyway. Uh, yeah, so these are all of the VLANs. You can also create a trunk... Um, uh, port groups to directly pass all of the VLANs available on your switch directly to a VM in case you have maybe nest, uh, nested virtualization. So again, you can have a VMware environment inside your VMware uh, host to run, uh, to deploy and run um, A6i machine. So you can do this as you can see, as, I, as I've shown you here. Yeah, but it's a, it's a shadow, shadow cluster now, but yeah, you can do this, of course. All of these where is xi hosts virtual is xi hosts so these were vms you can you could have seen them down there uh, there but i for a reason i had to delete them uh, to reclaim uh, the storage devices to use them somewhere else for other purposes yeah so the, um, th that's it um, initially so yeah um, how to buy these it, it depends on where you are um, on this planet um, but in, I believe in, in each country you can have, um, of course this is a second, second hand server, we're not uh, talking here about buying a brand new server, you can't afford a new one uh, just for a, for a home lab, right? Uh, look, um, if, you, if you just need to run one VM, two VMs, if, if your uh, laptop or home PC can, can hold that load, then it's fine, you don't need to spend money on, on, on a server. Uh, if you can afford running uh, VMs, just normal VMs, maybe on the cloud, you can go on, uh, you can use leverage, yeah, you can leverage free VMs on, on Azure or AWS, maybe, that's possible if you are gonna implement, like, yeah, 
few VMs, but if you want to deploy a lot of VMs with high uh, and assign them um, and allocate to them um, powerful resources, then on a cloud it will be very expensive, of course. So you can do this on lab. If you frequently, uh, yeah, uh, want to test things or uh, would l you have certification exam, yeah, you, you are preparing for a cer certification exam or exams. So in that case, I think, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it would be it would be it would be um, better if you invest, um, yeah, some money in um, in home lab. Okay, you just it's an upfront cost and that's it. Okay. Uh, again, uh, you can find on your uh, wherever you are and the country uh, you live in, you, there should be um, a local market for uh, used servers and second-hand devices. Um, I had to get my my server from the UK. I live in the Netherlands right now. Um, there are great companies uh, for second-hand and refurbished servers and equipment in the Netherlands, but for a home lab, when I consider the costs, no, it was really expensive to buy a second-hand server in the Netherlands with the uh, with the uh, hardware specification that I needed. So uh, yeah, I, I got it from uh, eBay uh, via uh, a company in the UK and uh, the shipping, the uh, customs, levy, everything. Uh, the total was less than w what I would have spent for a server uh, on a server here uh, yeah, to Dubai uh, from the Dutch uh, market unfortunately so uh, yeah that gen 9 server was my second server to buy from the same uh, the british uh, british uh, company uh, great uh, great um, uh, quality and uh, yeah yep and uh, t uh, quite cheaper uh, if you needed to get a switch uh, that model it depends again uh, once i got it from from Uni the united states for 30 dollars only and I, I was suspecting the quality of the product, but I gave it a go. Thirty dollars is nothing. When I got it, I found it impressive. But again, yeah, I had to move to uh, uh, to the Netherlands, so I had to sell it. I couldn't travel with it. Uh, what else? Yeah, I I got the same switch again from uh, from a Dutch company. Um, it wasn't that exp Dutch or German. I can't really remember now. Maybe it was German from Germany. Uh, I paid around. 80 euros. 80 euros is still also good. I couldn't find it find it cheaper uh, as the uh, the the older one, but yeah, it, it's fine. Uh, the price of the server again it depends on where you are uh, on what the uh, uh, the hardware specifications that you, the hardware configuration that you need. Okay, so you can pay 500 euros. You can pay more or less. It, it depends um, <clears throat> on, on on how much you'd like to uh, invest. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. For the licenses, I, I get my uh, VMware licenses from VMware itself because I'm a I'm a, I'm a VMware uh, V expert. So they offer us uh, free annual licenses that I need to re recurrent every year. Uh, if you're not interested in the V expert program, then there is another route. Also, you the, you can buy um, you can subscribe to a service from VMware called VMug. Advantage. Let me show that to you. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So VMAG uh, says the VMware um, users group community. Yeah, you can subscribe to it. You, you will gain some, uh, yeah, uh, privileges such as some, yeah, some uh, discounts, um, some licenses for. Uh, where is it that written? It's uh, it's written somewhere, but it's uh, yeah 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 here evaluation licenses. These annual licenses are uh, valid for one year. Include it. It will it should be included here. Uh, I believe yeah everything you can find is e uh, vSphere licenses, NSX, vSAN licenses, everything. If you um, yeah take that advantage and subscribe to that. Uh, that would be um, a great chance for you, yeah, to, to have licenses the, uh, the the right way, and uh, yeah. Uh, all right, so that's uh, pretty much uh, uh, everything uh, about my lab. Um, yeah, and I hope that you like the uh, quick video here. Yeah, right. See you in another video. Bye.